Chinese state-owned company Costco has got the green light to acquire just under a quarter of a stake in a container terminal at Germany's biggest port of Hamburg. The decision comes after months of argument within Germany's coalition government. Costco had originally sought a 35% stake, a prospect that caused an outcry over fears it would give China too much influence on German and European transport infrastructure. The current arrangement does not give Costco any say in management or strategic decisions. China accounts for around 30% of goods coming in and out of the port of Hamburg. I'd like to bring in Dr. Saskia Hiba. She's a senior politics lecturer specializing in the Asia-Pacific region at the Academy for Civil Education in Tutzing in southern Germany. Dr. Hiba, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz used to be the mayor of Hamburg and he had to personally intervene to get this deal through. Why is this acquisition so controversial? That is exactly the case. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, the former first mayor of Hamburg and now Chancellor Schulz intervened and overruled um, the um, suggestion from six um, major parts of the administration, six ministries and institutions in his own government that advised against a participation of uh, a major Chinese state company, uh, Costco, in acquiring a stake being it a minor stake in uh, a part of Hamburg Harbor. We have to look at it from two different um, <clears throat> dimensions. A, it is, of course, from the side of Chinese strategic investments overseas, uh, sort of point two new um, string of pull strategy because Cas Costco already owns uh, stakes and parts uh, uh, and ports in other parts of Europe in the Netherlands, in Spain and Italy. So this would be the first major um, stake and uh, investment in a German port. And of course, Germany is a very important, the most important European trade partner uh, to China. And that is some much needed context there. But that said, this is a 24.9% stake in one of a number of terminals at the port of Hamburg. How much strategic control does this actually give China? Not much as far as we know. What we would have to take into account here is uh, how professional uh, Chinese state-owned companies, Chinese state companies uh, will continue to stay. Chinese major international corporations being private or state-owned used to make a point in employing international, pro highly professional experts into um, their companies, their mother houses in, in, in China. And it will be, it, it will remain to be seen how that how the, the professional performance of state-owned companies in China will continue as, as a follow-up of the COVID uh, pandemic, as a follow-up of the property crisis in China and a follow-up of due to corona, due to COVID, a logistics breakdown and of course a breakdown in international shipping. The Chinese uh, state authorities um, had a window of opportunity to rein into companies and to draw a lot of control um, on in, in interstate authorities and uh, to reduce um, professional economic um, performance in order to, uh, re to, to, to give national um, state authorities more authority. So that is a crucial point in China's development um, history. China has to leave the former development uh, model and China has to reinvent, has to invent a new economic model now with a, uh, a two-circuit uh, model. But that brings in more state control and that is a potential threat to uh, free and um, future-minded entrepreneurship, not only in China, not only in Europe, but, but um, on a global scale. So let's look at what's in it for Germany. The logistics firm HHLA, which runs this terminal, had originally wanted to give Costco a 35% stake. What does this tell us about the level of reliance on Chinese investment in this country? 
Unfortunately, it's very difficult because um, every single investment of Chinese companies in Germany is a different story. Uh, in, in some examples, um, Chinese investors brought a lot of money into German companies, enabling um, middle-aged, um, literally middle-aged German companies to reinvest into the future. In other parts, um, only the assets had been sucked out and drawn out of German companies and, and the rest um, had been left to, to Walshman. So um, there is no comparison, but we do have, we do expect to see the following pattern. <clears throat> the turnout has to be real and right. And if any investment doesn't have a turnout, and if an investment, wherever it is, uh, remains to be um, unprofitable and unsafe and unstable. Stability and safety and order are very, very important um, to Chinese um, business ethics and Chinese economic planning. So if that fails, um, then even international investments will be given up. Unfortunately, this assessment has been <clears throat> challenged by what we see in other parts of the world as long-term strategic investments, for example, in the Pakistani port of Gwadar, which turned out for uh, a long period as not reasonable and highly um, dangerous concerning the business plan and investment patterns. But China is keeping up investments in other parts of the world to different reasons. However, that is very, very important. Europe is very important to China. European ports, European airports, European harbors like Duisport and the city of Duisburg is very important to China. So Chinese investments in Europe um, will remain to be witnessed and seen, but on a small scale, and we are seeing uh, we are seeing a dramatic and drastic re reduction of Chinese investments in Europe. Uh, as well as on a global scale since uh, 2017, 2018. So that be, that had been before the COVID pandemic, China reduced investments abroad, especially in Europe. And I'd love to touch more on that a little later. But first of all, you mentioned stability. Much of the outcry about this arose from lessons Germany learned about the perils of relying too heavily on Russian energy. In the case of a conflict, in the most extreme case, an invasion of Taiwan, how vulnerable would Germany be because of the investments China has in the country? Um, well, the, the vulnerability is not um, due to investments in the country. The worst case, there would be um, a cut of, of um, investments and a, a cut of, of money flowing into uh, research and design and <clears throat> development. Um, the, well, Germany, um, German companies in Germany remain in, in a, a German legal atmosphere, a German legal dimension. But uh, we should not forget that China is also dependent on international trade and, and trade uh, with, with Europe. And despite of the fact um, that China is employing that new development model of the, uh, the, the two-circuit um, development model, increasing domestic consumption, increasing domestic high-tech manufacturing, high-tech industries, and at the same time um, still trying to invite as much as, um, as, much as high-tech uh, foreign technology as possible, China will remain um, to uh, contribute to international, um, international global trade. And uh, this campaign 2035 is a plan for China to come back um, into the global economic uh, free trade or the global economic uh, field. So unfortunately, there is no black and white and there are different signals from China. It will be uh, very interesting to see how China is adapting to the next presidential elections in the United States. Um, and it will, re will be very interesting to see how China is um, trying to divert uh, Europe from the US. There had been propaganda campaigns uh, for Chinese overseas um, uh, investors to come back to China, bring back money to China, sell foreign assets and property, bring back money to China. And at the same time, um, we, are, we are seeing that uh, diplomatic charm offensives in, in, in Europe 
in trying to divert uh, Europe from the US, which um, will not happen in, in the long term. Um, at the end, it's all about prof professional, professional experts in the administration. And finally, just to return to your point about Chinese investment in Europe actually falling, what does that tell us about Beijing's priorities? Well, the priority now is um, <clears throat> to restructure China's economy uh, for the future. Um, the former development model doesn't work anymore. Copy, adapt and paste doesn't work anymore. And China has to build up its own future-minded high-tech uh, industries. There are massive government campaigns um, putting a lot of money into future um, high-tech. China doesn't only want to be a high-tech nation, but a leading, a leading high-tech nations. And the campaigns and the investment programs, um, the study programs are um, uncomparable in the world. So it is indeed interesting uh, and attractive for um, Chinese scholars, academics abroad to go back and come back to China and All be right. a part of um, the, Chinese, the, the, the Chinese dream, uh, being a, a leading high-tech nation. All right, no more copy and paste. Saskia Hiba from the Academy for Civil Education, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me.